Okay, so welcome to the call, everyone. I am super excited about this call right now. We have a legend with us today, you know. So um, actually, let me make sure that, you know, I make him my um, co-host because, yeah. So we have too much value on the way today. We have too much crazy value on the way today. Um, so guys, my name is Katrina Werges. I'm your Chairman 10 leader. You guys already know that, but we have someone super special with us today. You know, um, he is a senior Forex analyst. You know, um, he is so good at what he does. Like he used to previously charge about five to 10K, you know, for two day trading courses. He's at the top of his game. He's a multiple seven figure trader. You know, he's made a fortune from trading. Like he lives a great lifestyle. He has an incredible family, you know, and he's a go live educator. And also he created the steady product, which has definitely been making, you know, everybody that's plugged into that product is definitely making a killing, making a killing from that product week after week after week. So I'm so, so excited that we actually have him on the call with us today. Um, he's here to bring so much value. You know, he's incredible. Like, I mean, I can't think of anyone more um, experienced, you know, more knowledgeable on the topic than this individual. So this is really a Forex mastery training. So guys, if you have anyone in your teams that's not yet plugged into this call, definitely jump into your chats and let them know that we are about to throw it down. We have the GOAT on the call with us right now, multiple seven-figure trader, senior Forex analyst, absolutely killing it in the trading game. His whole lifestyle is when we say like when we say forex funded i mean this guy is really forex funded you know and we have him on the call today we're so blessed and grateful that he's here guys before i bring him on let us show him some energy let me make sure the chat box is open um let's show him how excited we are to have him on so guys drop some fire emojis in the chat box for john dollary because he's about to throw down and i want him to know that we are excited to have him um we are grateful that he's taking the time because we know how busy he is he is super busy you know um so thank you so much john for having for, for coming and you know pouring so much value into us we already know exactly what to expect and we're truly grateful wow. that you've taken the time because we know how busy you are so john dollary i want to oh, bring you on great. now you know to Sorry. pour into the family yeah. so over to you john if you're here <laughs> well, good morning well good morning sorry it's usually my tone how are you doing everybody how are we doing i hope everybody is okay i appreciate the messages um, I appreciate obviously what you've just mentioned there. Let me turn that off. Uh, otherwise, it will be dinging all night. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you for the energy in the room. Appreciate you guys all for having me on tonight. Um, now, she did mention that I am kind of a part of Steady. Uh, it is something that we kind of created that we brought to the platform, which is great. But I'm not actually here really to promote kind of Steady in any way, shape, or form. That's not really my vibe. That's not really what I want to do. Um, I've been in this industry now for close to nine, coming up to nine years, right? And that's just trading. Being a part of Iron Mastery Academy came about last year. Um, a couple of conversations came about, uh, and it, it was obviously the right decision. We can see how much momentum the company is, um, well, kind of really, really thriving in at the moment. So I appreciate you all for jumping on the call tonight. Um, I am going to just obviously maybe briefly dive into different elements based upon maybe trading techniques, uh, but also just to open your eyes maybe onto different situations that you might not be aware of going on in the market. Okay, so within the Steady platform, myself, uh, my partner, kind of Justin Saini, I've got Mauricio on board as well. I've got a Spanish educator in Arellis as well. Uh, we really thrive on the ability to actually educate you guys on exactly how to do it. I always talk about that I'm not here to create professional signal takers. That is the last thing that I want as a legacy within this industry. I'm here to create self-sufficient and independent uh, forex analysts and uh, forex traders and that's for you to go ahead and utilize the information that we do give to you guys um, to then go utilize it and regurgitate that information implement that in information and then start to see the success within the industry now I will tell you that trading doesn't happen overnight okay it's coming into nine years and I still don't even classify myself as as a full-time professional trader I think you need 20 odd years in this game However, what we do do on the platform and what you do have the ability to have on this platform is the amount of value that's provided for within any 
form of forex industry there is nothing quite like the go live session there is nothing quite like the, the multiple array of products it doesn't have to be steady it can be anything that you like to utilize on they all work over a period of time and therefore if you just kind of set your stone or set yourself in a place where you say right i'm going to allow this to happen over the next two to three months you will start to see some consistency in what you're doing so i appreciate you guys having me on um I'm just going to go quickly share my screen. Let's just make sure everybody can uh, see the screen. Okay. Share the screen. Perfect. Now, I know there's been a lot of new guys into the platform, which is fantastic. Okay, which is fantastic. There's a lot of new blood into the system, which is perfect, which is why we're all here, right? We're all here to kind of utilize the trading platform as best as we can. And this is where, if you're not aware of what we do, this might be a good opportunity just to kind of enlighten you on different scenarios that happen in the market, okay? Whether it's the steady platform itself, we obviously do offer trade ideas and market execution ideas. We are probably not as regular as some of the other uh, products out there because we come from a different stance. We come from a potential swing trading element. Now, when I say swing trading, that doesn't mean that I want you to sit in something for weeks and months on end. That is exactly the opposite of what we try and do. Okay. Swing trading to us is about the element of risk to reward ratios. And I'm sure you've heard that time and time again, but it's so, so important because the reality in trading is you do not win every single trade. All right, that is the reality of trading. You're trading against the potential computerized system, an algorithmic state of a market condition and you are human. There is human error, there is human emotion involved in the market, but what is important when you are trading is understanding that there is an element called risk to reward ratio and risk to reward profiling. And that is what we aim to do in regards to every single trade we look to have is often one to three, one to four, one to five, so on and so forth. Every dollar that you're risking we're looking to make $3 back. Every dollar that you're risking, we often look to make six or $7 back. And if you continue to risk that same parameter, trade after trade, day after day, week after week, what you will find is that you could have a 20% win ratio. You could have a 30% win ratio, and you could still be up 20, 40%, 30% for the entire month because it's so, so important. Because if you were to win at a one to seven, you would then have to lose another seven trades just to be back at break even. And that is the element that we go for. We look for three or four setups within a week that will provide us a large amount of pips with the most minimal amount of risk possible. Okay, we've recently just relaunched the platform in itself. And you can see that we kind of on the platform here, we do have active, we have pending, we have closed. So anything that's currently active, kind of currently pending or currently closed, you will be able to click on the chart and you'll actually kind of bring it up and then you'll be able to apply it obviously on its own individual chart in here. Okay, so if you do look at something like the last trade that was sent out last week, unfortunately, we didn't win one today, but that just drives me harder to win the next one tomorrow. So we can see that the Australian dollar, you get given, obviously, the entry opportunity, you get given the targets, you get given the stop losses, you get given the levels, you should be looking to implement it on. From just simply looking at the risk to reward, you can see that this is going to be a substantial gain moving forward. Now, from that execution point, this was from last week, you can come back, flick onto whatever you're doing on your own charts. And we can see here on the one hour time frame, this was the exact movement that we were looking for over here. Okay, price spiked up. And then we had the expansion to the downside closing out for the week. And I actually am expecting further downside momentum. Now, that's the product side of things. But for us, the main I believe the most amount of value within all of this is the actual go live sessions and the education. Now I am based in the UK. We are actually introducing live trading with you guys as well as the educational market ideas. So you will see us Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, live trading alongside of you. However, if you are newer to the market, if you have been diving through different ideas, different concepts, if you've been maybe even in the industry for a while and you have failed to be profitable just yet, I believe I have the key for you, and that is within my favorite sessions. I've created a complete video course series, absolutely part of everything that we do. And you can see within the session in here that we do have from lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, four, five, all the way up to about lesson eight, but you have all the old lessons in here as well. And I truly believe there is nothing quite as valuable for the price that you're getting at um, in the entire industry. And that's not me 
being big headed. That's me having been in this industry for nine years trading. Network marketing is an entirely different new world to me. But from a trading perspective, there is nothing quite like this. And it's really, really exciting. And there is so much success stories that come from obviously understanding this. And I pride myself on the ability to explain information which is able to be retained and therefore regurgitated onto the charts for you to apply it and become self-sufficient. So that's just kind of a quick update on who we are and what we offer on the platform in ourselves. Okay, moving forward. Um, you can add it into the back chart, it's about 22 bucks, so on and so forth. Okay, so to get into the real value um, in terms of who we are and what we do. Now, I talk about having a trading plan. If you've been on a call with me, if you've been in an event with me, if you've been um, on the platform in itself, I always talk about that there are seven steps in regards to entering the market. Because when we come to the market, there's sometimes an overalling feeling, right? Sometimes you're seeing all these indicators on a page. Sometimes there's a MACD, there's a moving average, there's trend lines, there's loads of horizontal lines, there's people screaming and shouting on a go live session. Whereas we prefer to believe that simplicity is key. Simple yet smart. So if you're writing anything down, the first two things I want you to write down is the fact that the market is only ever doing two things. Regardless of everything else that you've ever learned, the market is only doing two things. It's looking to seek and destroy. So it's looking to grab liquidity above highs, above lows, seeking areas of multiple high wick rejection ranges. It's looking to seek liquidity in order for the market to create enough liquidity to then move in the direction of buy. So seek and destroy is your first element. The second element is rebalancing. So if you come to the market every single day with those two concepts that you're looking for the market to either seek and destroy, how can I come and take a low? How can I come take a high? How can I come rebalance the market? You've already, I've created the entire blueprint just in those two different elements right there. You then have to step down into maybe seven different steps to be able to implement what we look to do. Now, we talk about wave sequences, understanding of true support and resistance. Many of us might know typical support and resistance, but there's a deeper underlying understanding of what true support and resistance is, which something might be you might not be aware of. OK, price action. You, it's so, so important that price action is literally the language of the market. So you have to understand, not necessarily to execute, but you have to understand that the same way if you were trying to learn Spanish or English, or if you were blind and you had to touch that paper, or if you were deaf and you had to learn how to sign language, the shape, the size, the relationship from wick to body, the directional biases of those wicks, the amount of volume that's been created within a certain candlestick on a specific time frame is going to hold a high probability in regards to how dictating trend direction. The market is telling you what's happening day after day, week after week, and by simply understanding. And there's about 10 or 12 different candlesticks that we talk about, but I really thrive or pride myself on the fact that we talk about what it is, where it is, how to utilize it, what time frame to utilize it on, how we can then find entries upon it. So you get five different steps within those sequences. Step four, we have to understand accumulation and distribution something, it might be a new concept to you guys. It might be a different concept to you guys. It's readily available information, but it's information that isn't easily accessible. Every move in the market begins from a period of consolidation. So if we could understand why something or how something is consolidating, then we can look to capitalize on the most optimal areas possible. And that's where we step into obviously maybe step five, where we look at the different Fibonacci ratio regions, Step six, which is one of the most um, underrated piece of elements that there is out there, time and price. The market is consistently being delivered, okay? Very, very systematically. There is the amount of order flow that comes in at a specific time, and therefore there's certain times of market where it's most likely to print potentially the high or low of the day. So if we know that there's going to be a potential high or low of the day, then we can look to capitalize on that overall market for the rest of the day. Step seven is gonna be the funky stuff, the order flow, the manipulation, and understanding different stylistic ways to potentially find entries. And this is obviously broken down into each different lesson. You can start to see each different individual element 
that goes into all of this kind of steady content moving forward. And then breaking that down, you'll have the strategy one, strategy two, strategy three, and strategy four, so on and so forth. Okay, so if I just kind of bring this up, and we're going to go back and forth and try find examples on pages. Uh, and then obviously, in terms of what we've just been talking about, so let me bring this down. If anybody was plugged into kind of market mastery, Chris Terry session, you'll probably seen this thing here. So we've just broken down, obviously, the different seven steps that we were talking about. Okay, now very, very simply, okay, step one is identifying where you are within relationship to the trend. It's so, so important to build a narrative. Whether you're trying to trade the five minute time frame, the daily time frame, the monthly time frame, the one minute time frame, you have to have a narrative in mind to be able to then establish where should I be finding entries and executions for that. So step one is always about identifying where we are in relationship to the trend. And yes, of course, this is simplistic technical analysis right here, but we're always looking to dictate where the market is trying to create highs and higher lows. When we are in buying opportunities, we only want to look for opportunities at the lowest point. A side note, something that changed my whole entire trading was the concept and understanding that I should come to the market every single day thinking, can I buy lower and can I sell higher? I promise you, that alone changed my entire trading mindset in regards to, do I want to wait for this whole four hour candle? Do I want to wait for this whole one hour candle? No, what you'll often find is if you do come onto the steady platform or whether you just utilize the information for your own trading, you'll be catching the very top of trends. And by the time everybody else is getting in, you're already break even, or you're already one to two, one to three, one to four up in terms of risk to reward ratio. Okay. So really, really important. Come to the mindset every day, seek and destroy rebalancing. That's the only two things that the market's trying to do. Step two, can I buy lower and can I sell higher? There is always retracements going on within the market. And therefore, when identifying an uptrend, you will be creating higher highs and higher lows. And therefore, you're always looking for that higher low situation to be established. For anyone who's definitely writing notes, you'll often find that the power of three is the highest probability of extra trade execution. So one wave, two wave establishes the trend. You attack it on the third attempt, you're looking at a potential of around 80% probability of that becoming the next wave to the upside. Now from an uptrend, you've obviously got the downtrend point, you're looking for a very, very similar situation to the market pushing lower. Every time you get to the lowest point, you're then expecting that pullback. And it's at that pullback region that we look to utilize some of the smart, um, the, the kind of smart concepts in terms of what we're trying to do to find the entry into that next impulsive leg. Another side tip when you're looking at this directional bias of trend, often if you've moved this amount of pips in your first initial leg, that can then be utilized as a target process for your second leg. The same way that if we moved from this high to this low, that can then be utilized as a target process for your third leg. If the market, the market continuously looks to move in legs, if it's moved this amount of pips in here, it will often duplicate that upon its next movement, okay? It's very, very fractal. The market is consistently repeating it, and that is essentially all the technical analysis is. Something that's happened in the past, and therefore we can take that information back, test that information, and see how that has a high probability of playing out again because it's happened in the past. So step one, we're identifying where we are in relationship to the trend. Step two, true support and resistance. Now, again, please don't feel as though you have to grab all of this concept right now. That is what study is there for you to do. But there's two different elements to this. Now, price is always being built around key psychological price points. Zeros, 25s, 50s, 75s. Yes, there's going to be fluctuations around those levels because that's just what liquidity is. However, every single move begins from a whole number. 
there's no need to get into it right now, but you can just simply see that we can start implementing maybe a quarter theory element where you start dividing these things up every thousand, every 500, every 250. And within an impulsive movement, you're looking for it to do around 250 pips of its first initial leg and barrier. True support and resistance. What I talked about in regards to rebalancing itself is that not just because there's been a high and we've attacked it a second time, maybe there's been a level that's been attacked previously or the market's bounced from a floor or it's rejected off of a ceiling as such. True support and resistance is understanding where the market has been traded inefficiently. Because not that go over your head? When the market has been traded inefficiently, that becomes a magnetizing price level. The price gets drawn back to those levels. Why? Because it helps rebalance the market. It constantly has to be rebalanced. And this is where we can look to utilize areas, just as in this example of where the low of this wick and the high of this wick, there was only one delivering of price to the downside. And as market continued to run lower, this, essentially a gap in price became a region that we could look to kind of rebalance and look to find on a retracement type level. Step two, seek and destroy. Where was the liquidity above the high? Okay, so true support and resistance, we'll, we'll touch into it or maybe a few examples, but that's kind of what we're looking at. Step three, obviously price action. If you, any of you have kind of screenshots or anything that you want to do, you could be looking at a few different pieces of price action. Now, it's so, so important. I haven't put everything in on this PowerPoint here, but there's just going to be a few that obviously can correlate between what is a reversal point and what is just maybe a trend continuation. Well, in regards to this situation here, from spinning tops to double dojis to maybe a, the combination of them both, what's the storyline of price? Okay. The storyline of the prices. Now, it's not to find necessarily entries upon formations like this or this or this or this right but what it is to do is to tell the story to dictate the directional bias how do we know that when we've made a high how do we know when we've made a low well the storyline of price is being blueprinted for us okay you're getting a blueprint from simply the structure and the relationship of volume and wick to ratio where you are in relationship to the trend so if you start to see opportunities like this these really start to gear up to maybe where you can understand the top of the market, the bottom of the market, that liquidity is thinning, that buyers and sellers are somewhat equaling each other out. Okay. And therefore look to utilize that and use that information maybe onto step four with the accumulation distribution type phase. Okay. Another great rejection candlestick, obviously looking for it, it's form at the bottom, showing you a willingness that the buyers are looking to entertain into the market. Obviously in the reversal format, you're looking at this being pointed to the downside, showing you that there is a shadow of price. The wicks are indicating where there is a shadow of price has previously been. And we can see that our price has pushed up and then the sellers have dominated the market to bring it back down and so on and so forth. Another reversal point is when we're looking for, obviously maybe engulfing type candlesticks. Now I look for whether it's 100%, 100% plus or an entire range. You're looking for these type of formations to occur. Why? Because that will indicate that we are ready for the next leg of the journey of the trend. Okay. Now, on, on steady in itself, there's maybe eight or 10 that you have to learn. And I go through each different element for you to, to kind of grasp that concept um, and how to utilize that. Now, phase four, we're talking about accumulation and distribution. This chart might seem confusing to some of you. Some of you might have seen this, some of you might be using this information, and that's fantastic. Now, there's a few different elements that you need that aren't on this picture. You need to understand potential divergence, you need to understand potential volume, but that is, can all be taught over time. But if you understand that every single move begins from a period of consolidation, so what is a period of consolidation? A period of consolidation is anything that goes beyond three candlesticks. If you've got three candlesticks that are relatively making kind of equal highs and equal lows and we're moving sideways, it doesn't matter the time frame because everything is fractal. What you can apply on the monthly is the same thing you can apply on the one minute. It doesn't matter as long as you understand what you're looking for. But within 
that three or four, five, six, it doesn't matter, period of consolidation, what is happening within that market? Well, in this situation, in terms of accumulation, you're looking at the sellers starting to hedge themselves out of all the positions they have to the downside. And you start looking at the buyers being interested in wanting to take the market back to the upside. But we often work in a very manipulative way. We often work in a very manipulative market. And this is where understanding how we kind of have selling climaxes, secondary test, phase B, we'll often see this spring situation that clears all stop losses below. How many times have you been in a situation where prices run your stop loss, but then eventually gone in the overall direction that you've looked at? Okay, understanding some of this information might help you be like, okay, well, that's what it was trying to do before reversing back to the upside or invertly reversing to the downside so on and so forth. Um, just as a cheeky example, the best way for me to describe this, if this was looking confusing to you, is that you're looking for the market to relatively round itself off. If you start seeing the market kind of round itself off, you can start seeing that the selling climax has occurred. We then have a secondary test, and what this is doing is building liquidity. And what I mean by building liquidity is building enough volume, or building enough order flow, Still with me? Building enough orders in regards to the buying market wanting to get back involved. And we can look to capitalize on obviously uh, situations down here, so on and so forth. Change of structure, pullback, where was the price left open, retraced, rebalanced, and then rejected in terms of the mitigation point. Step five, Fibonacci, something that we may be aware of. Now, it's not simply Fibonacci that moves the market. Fibonacci does not move the market. Fibonacci is well, I mean, it is a, <laughs> it is a number, a numerical sequence. However, what we are doing is measuring the legs of the last impulsive movement that has occurred. Okay, so we're looking for significant A's. Or we could, the easiest way for me to explain how to utilize the FIB is we are connecting swing points. If we know that the market's making a lower high and we've ran into a lower low, what's the next thing that you expect to occur? the retracement cycle. Now there's some very important levels to be aware of and without kind of taking up too much of your time, I always like to focus in between this kind of 71 and 88 point region. This is what we class as a premium or discounted range. And what I mean by that is that once we trade past 50%, now in technical terms, yes, we are measuring the high to this low, and 50% is, is halfway. But what does that actually mean in terms of an entire currency, a trillion dollar a day, multi-trillion dollar a day industry? We've got to consider that as retail traders, 300,000 people win IML. That means absolutely nothing in terms of uh, the amount of money that's flowing. I've literally seen myself a billion dollar order get placed a billion dollar order, so that's 1.1, 1 .1. I, don't, I don't know how many lots people are trading, if you're on MetaTrader or whatever platform that you're on, that's a 1.1 1 .1 billion lot, all right? So 1.1, 1 .1. some of us are working with 0 0.1, some of us are working with one lot, some of us are working with 10 lots, so on and so forth. 1.1 .1 million lot, okay? And I've literally seen that. So remember, no matter how much money we have in our account, you've got to understand the bigger picture, what's actually going on in this industry. So we can see that 50%, what does that mean? It means fair value, okay? It means that currency, let's take, let's say Euro against the US dollar. Once we start trading past the 50% of this impulsive leg to the downside, and we start pulling back and we go beyond 50%, we've reached a point of equilibrium. Euro is now a fair value back against that US dollar. And the higher we start going, it means you're getting it at a better rate. And therefore the bigger players in the game are going to be wanting to trade back in alignment. Why? Because they're getting something at a discount, knowing that the price is likely to go further. Okay, simplest way I could potentially identify and explain FIB in, this, in a short amount of time. All right, step six, time and price. Really, really important. Now we are, a majority of us are maybe based um, within kind of GMT timing or maybe an hour or two 
behind or ahead, especially maybe if you're in Africa, maybe a couple of hours ahead. So, so important. Now, these are my specific times that I look for. Obviously, you might have to correlate them with British summertime as it is right now, but anywhere between 6.30 and 10 a.m., I'll be looking to find and execute upon a high or low of the day. Don't let, please don't let this bit go over your head. Why? Because London has the most amount of volume within the market. New York has the most amount of volatility in the market. Okay? So volume, the amount of orders that are being placed, where positions are starting to he get hedged into the market. You will find the majority of that volume is being increased into London, and then you will see fluctuations and erratic behavior often go into New York or continuations into New York. Now, there's very specific windows that we look to enter, and that might help your trading with the understanding of how to capitalize on those very, very specific kind of entry windows. Step seven, some of the funky stuff, different elements. I mean, I've worked with loads of different people. I've, I've, I've learned information from every, uh, all different sources and um, mentors and educators. And I, I consistently search to become better because I think if you stop learning or if you think you know it all, that is the moment that you've almost failed. Right? That is my personal opinion. And I will always continue. If I hear bits of information there, if I hear bits of information there, I will look to see if I can capitalize on that. Nobody in the world is self-made. I, do, I don't accept that. But what you can't take away from people is that they're self-educated. And that is where I come from. Different mentors and big players in the game, mortgage brokers. Uh, I've literally sat uh, in the top of the shard, capital trading with a brokerage firm. I've worked with hedge funds. I've worked with big institutions. I've, I've taught over, but even before joining IM Mastery Academy, I've taught over 3,000 people globally from South Africa to Singapore to Toronto to Dubai, um, all over America. And it's so, so important that you are always continuously accepting that you don't know everything. Nobody is self-made. But what nobody can take away, away from you is being self-educated. All right. So if we just look to implement, I mean, these are some of the, the, the trades on the old platform that we've just seen. I didn't realize they're on there. How, how many have we got? So what you'll often get is you'll get that kind of order ticket. And you can see that we have an entry. And you can start to see how minimal risk is compared to the rewards. And this is why you won't get 300 trades in a week. This is it's not realistic to what we do. We look to capitalize and the reason this might help you is because you can kind of become a slightly more relaxed approach. There's very specific reasoning as to why the market moves. And that is what we teach. There is no trend line. Apologies if anyone teaches that within the, the, the organization. Do you really think a tr multi-trillion dollar industry is derived on the, the ability of what a trend line does? Or maybe a moving average, which is a delayed indicator. Raw price action dictated by systematic price delivery. I can't emphasize that enough, that price is systematically being delivered. And I'm going to show you something very, very quickly. But this is the type of thing that you can expect, that we look for most optimal entries. You can see the entry TP1, TP2, and TP3. The stops are always giving us the highest risk to reward possibles. Like I say, one to three is a minimum. One to four, five, six is about an average. And then you can push into seven, eights, and nines especially if you plug into the sessions as well. Another opportunity, this was only a couple of weeks ago, GJ, again, entry, stop, TP1, TP2, TP3. We're talking about two to 300 pip moves with often maybe a 15 to 20 pip stop. All right, next. We still go, we've got still more stuff in here. Oh, amazing, okay. So again, another market execution, you get the time, the price, the, the entry level, so on and so forth. Entry, stop, TP1, TP2. And for anyone that, those mathematicians out there, that is over 150 pips with 30 pip risk or 40 pip risk in there, okay? Risk to reward, so, so important. Another opportunity, GBP AUD, all right? Very minimal risk. You can see the order ticket. There is no foo-foo going on here. We don't do that. We don't sit live and tell you that we've, we've, we've won a trade and we don't. We come from a teaching element. Hold yourself accountable because we hold ourselves accountable. If something hits, it hits. If it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. Because there is always going to be another trade around the corner. So on and so forth. 
All right. Uh, look, amazing. So look, uh, there is there is going to be losers. There is going to be losers. But even when we lose, we often win. All right. Even when we lose, we often win. Market ends up going in our favor. So on and so forth. Um, again, so on and so forth. All right, guys. So that's kind of the stylistic ways that we like to work, breaking down each different element and just looking at kind of the market and identifying where we are in relationship to the trend is so, so important. Um, moving forward. Now the risk to reward element, like I say, it allows you to have flexibility within the market. And I promise you any advice that I can give to people that are coming into the industry is do things the right way from the beginning. I've been in a situation where I built an account to about 3.5 million and I've lost 2 million in a day. I've been in that situation. So I can talk from an honest uh, perspective that would you be in a far better position today if you would do the right things, if you work the percentages, if you work the correct compounding way, percentage compounding, rather than just trying to come to the market every single day and flip that account, you have to stay in the game. And I promise you, the longer that you stay in the game, the more confidence that you will build. The more confidence that you build, it depends on the experience that you have. How do you build more confidence and experience where well, you have to be able to uh, journal your trade, journal your positions, create some kind of portfolio of what you're doing, whether that's an express Excel spreadsheet, whether that is um, the before and after type situations and before and after shots. So there's lots to obviously kind of digest there. There's lots to talk about. I will go and kind of answer some, some questions that are, are in the chat box, but I appreciate some of you are not looking to maybe utilize all of the education on the platform, and that's absolutely fine. But there might be someone on this call who's been slightly lost or has really looked for a, a potential to understand the market on a deeper understanding, and that is what I believe kind of steady can do for you. And you can look to utilize that market moving forward. So I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, I'm just gonna ha have a quick check on the chat box, make sure everybody is okay. Amazing. So I know that I can, uh, <laughs> I can talk for a while. Remaining 20% with tracing and currently in the same here. It's all good. What do you recommend about steady? Um, my, my highest recommendation, whether it's Justin, whether it's Mauricio, whether it's me, whether it's Arellis, if any of you guys are as a Spanish origin or whether you speak Spanish, um, that's kind of where to go from. I appreciate if some of you guys are brand new. I appreciate that the, some of you are brand new. Where to start, where to go from, where to simplify the industry, I promise you, I've got you. <laughs> All right, I promise you, I've got you. If you allow yourself to plug in, okay? If you allow yourself to plug in, you'll be able to obviously obtain the information. I'm useless with this thing. How can I get rid of this? Move that over there. All right. Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. Each different element is broken down for you from what we've just spoken about. Okay. You'll start to see the processes, start to see the processes. And then you can plug in, obviously, a couple of times in a week. This is old, obviously, as of old of today. What we will also introduce myself and Mauricio. Justin, we will be going live and doing live executions on New York session, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays as well. Appreciate you guys. Do you go against the trend and place opposite positions for retracements? Uh, I have a strong affinity that I have a saying in mind, the 80% continuation, 20% reversal. Okay, because we're looking to catch the move that has the majority of momentum within it okay what has the highest probability moving forward within it how many trades do you week anywhere between kind of the platform says one to three 
with the new platform, it will be kind of two to four. And then we'll obviously have the live trading sessions as well. So three times a week, you will be live. And if that goes well, and if everybody enjoys it, I may even introduce kind of London sessions as well. <laughs> Uh, do you have a recording to teach about the copy and paste? Do you have a review to teach about the copy and paste? Does news, uh, all of the updates will be occurring soon. Absolutely fine. That's a good question. Does news from Forex Factory really affect trade bidding patterns? Where is someone trying to analyze? Now, I come from, um, <laughs> can you do a live setup? Cool, we can do a couple of live examples. Absolutely not a problem. Um, so the first question that was there was obviously about the fundamentals, right? The fundamental aspect behind the market. Now, of course, there is going to be certain times that we have to be aware of within the market. However, I come from a stance that price is already being dictated. The market directional bias is already being dictated. And therefore, what the news is and what the fundamental aspect of news is doing is creating volume. It's creating the reason as to why liquidity is going to move in a certain direction. So the market is essentially printing itself in the directional bias that it wants to go. And then we will look to kind of capitalize using those different kind of things. Cool. So let's just, um, someone asked, can we do a, a quick live uh, kind of example? Absolutely not a problem. So something that we often like to work on is, the dollar, right? So the dollar holds around 80% share of the entire uh, currency exchange, whether that's globally, whether that's different investment portfolios that happen. Most the majority of things that occur within the world are you or based upon using that dollar as a transfer. So we have to be aware of something like the dollar index. Now, looking at the seven different steps that we talked about, okay, what we can see on this specific time frame, right? So we always do it, I call it top down analysis. We class it as top down analysis in regards to how do we identify from top to bottom where we are? And that's what understanding and learning step one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven might do for you. So looking at this, we can see from a weekly time frame that price is printing higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And then we had obviously crazy liquidity based upon some of the coronavirus situation that just occurred so when we can see so we can see how the market is still essentially creating this high and this could still be a potential pullback so the way that i'm looking and perceiving the market right now is that price is still structurally above this high point in here right so that is classified at this moment in time as a higher high right. step two True support and resistance. True support and resistance. Now, flicking through multiple time frames, you're going to find different elements where we look for. When trying to understand directional bias, you look to capitalize on the weekly or the daily time frame. That will hold the highest probability of trend direction. So we can see that we've kind of got a high low point and a high low point. The flicking between the weekly and the daily, what we can see, trying to understand true market uh, support and resistance levels, is what we class in here. Okay, the reason, <laughs> if some of you are new, it's going to be fairly confusing, and that's kind of what all the education is for over on the Steady platform. Um, but we're looking to kind of utilize these last significant sell to buy type situations where the market engineers price lower only for the market to then actually increase in size and we can see that time in or day in day out here right every single time that the market looks to push itself higher and then reverse trend price looks to return back to those levels okay every time that we have a blue candlestick pushing higher we look to return to those type of levels so we can see that price returned back to this in the opposite direction and therefore Combining that with the weekly analysis, we can see that DXY right now has kind of this three pin pattern formation. There's a lot to, judging by some of the comments, there's a lot here to actually kind of talk about, which if you don't understand, it's going to be quite difficult for you. Uh, this is a reversal formation in itself. 
and we're looking for price to head higher. Okay. Always, can we always buy at a lower price? We can see how the market's pulling back. Dropping this thing into lower time frames, we're going to start identifying maybe situations where price hasn't rebalanced itself properly. Looking after the reaction of the market today, we can understand that, right, this market from this high to this low has only offered itself in a singular direction. Okay, we've left ourselves open in here. This is how we look to capitalize on the rebalancing aspect. The market right here is going high, higher low, higher high. So where could the next higher low come? Well, in order for the market to rebalance itself, we need to show a willingness to come back into this level. Why? Because it's been left open. What does that mean? Well, it means that the market only offered itself in one direction and therefore it's left inefficiently. So what does that mean? It means that it becomes an attraction point for price to want to revisit that level in order for the market to make its next leg of momentum to the upside. Step three, price action dictating, obviously the multiple variations of price. On the weekly time frame, we can see that we've got very, very strong bullish momentum candlesticks. We've got this nice three pin pattern, which you might understand is also a head and shoulders type situation. Um, the daily time frame again, price is pushing up and we're looking for that nice pullback into here. Diving into the kind of the four hour, one hour, everything that you like to utilize on whatever time frame, it's fractal, which means that if you understand what you're looking for, you can implement it on the one minute. You have to have the narrative. The same thing that you look for on the monthly can be the same thing you look for the one minute, but you just have to understand what you're looking for. So step one, waves, higher highs, higher lows. Step two, understanding true support and resistance, imbalanced areas or inefficiently traded areas. Step three, understanding the price action. Well, the higher time frame price action right now is telling me that we want to go higher. Step four, accumulation, distribution. Well, if we understand that the market is somewhat trapped between this range and here, okay, if we can see that the market's sort of moving sideways in here, doesn't this look very, very similar in regards to the market kind of rounding itself off what we talked about? We kind of had a selling climax, right? We had a secondary test. We pulled liquidity in here. We pulled liquidity in here we sprung through and made a new higher high. So the structure broke. Now, again, I appreciate there is a lot of information here. I'm regurgitating nine years worth of information, but I also just maybe want you to see the value within it. We then make the higher high, or sorry, the higher low, which acts as a test of this imbalance in here before making that new leg high. So we can see that we are potentially accumulating from what we talked about within the pictures, we are accumulating orders. The buyers are starting to gear up in order for the market to want to go higher. Step five, Fibonacci. So within our trading plan, what are we trying to do? Well, from the most significant low that was this last point in here to the most significant high, okay, if we were to measure this whole leg of movement to the upside, within our specific zone, we've got between 71 and 88 without going deeper into it, these are the very specific zones that we like to trade within because they're the most optimal. The market often moves out of those areas the most. Step six, time and price. Well, there's gonna be specific times. Let's say the market gets into this area at the beginning of New York, so 12 to about four. If the market starts to suggest a willingness, right? Starts to suggest a willingness within this zone at the correct time which could be new york tomorrow we can then expect that that is going to be the low of the week and then we can just ride the trend for the rest of the week step seven is going to be obviously order flow manipulation so on and so forth okay order flow manipulation the funky bits that we're looking for Obviously, the easiest way for me to explain this is, is looking for the last down close candlestick. Okay. 
Okay. See how the market's rallied away. You will see this time and time again. See this time and time again. And if you plug into the session, what I will show you is this time and time again. What you're looking for is the last selling candlestick, that last selling opportunity before the market rallies away. Now, what's gone on there is the fact that bigger players in the game, big institutions, big hedge funds, big corporate banking societies, central banking organizations, they leave traces. They leave traces as to how they've manipulated the market. And what you will often see for them to allow or for them to create enough liquidity, what we will often see is that they will sell the market in order to buy it back up again. But rather than risking, let's just say, 2 million here in order to make 10 million here, you will see time in or day in, day out that they want to revisit the point at which they manipulated the market lower. The reason for that is because this then allows them the opportunity to get out of the loss that they are incurring in here. And once they get out of the loss that they are incurring in here, this is when we can look to capitalize in regards to taking the trend and taking the position. Okay. So looking at the DXY right now, so some of you obviously, yeah, John, shut up. No one really cares. You've done, you haven't really done a lot here. <laughs> this is what you're all basically waiting for, right? So what can we expect for tomorrow's market condition? Well, the daily close is about to occur at 10. The DXY is slightly different, but essentially on a lot of the candlesticks or a lot of the cross currency conversions, the daily candlesticks about to occur. Now, from what we can see here on the DXY, it's ran slightly lower than my initial analysis this morning, which is fine. Okay, which is fine because we just reobserve, we reanalyze, and we say, what is the situation right now? Well, we can see how the market created an engineered price lower before making a run higher. What did we do? We returned back to the very open of that body of price before making a new higher high situation. So on this daily time frame, we can see that that body of price is the last zone in which we need to be aware of. We can dig this thing lower, step into the four hour. What's going on here? Well, thinking about the two different elements, I'm saying, right, seek and destroy, where would the liquidity be provided for? And what I mean by liquidity is where is the money? The money is essentially below this wick right now. And if price can dip itself below this wick, what it will do is take out any of those buyers that were introduced into the market before actually then making its move higher. We also have a situation where price has been left undelivered in that zone in there. Okay. We also have flicking through the multiple time frames, one hour. Okay. We can see at this price point in here. Let me just make that black. Okay, we can see at this candlestick here on the one hour time frame. Okay, is there a better example? 30 minute, 15 minute? No, the one hour holds the majority of volume. That's fine. So, what I am suggesting is that I would expect that the DXY comes down to this price point of around 96.70. So, what does that mean for things like Euro? Something like Euro might push itself up slightly higher. I did offer a, a trading example today. It was around about here, and unfortunately, we got absolutely blown out of the park. 28 pips, but the risk was over 200 or 300 pip potential gain. But this is now where we can look for, where was the liquidity? Liquidity was in here. Liquidity was in here. What's been left open? Well, this has been left open. This has been left open. Now that the markets have achieved these levels up here. Okay, well, we might expect that Euro USD coming into tomorrow is going to do one of two things. I will look for the opportunity around Euro USD at this type of level in him. Okay, so you're probably looking around anywhere between 12 and 15 pip risk, but in terms of the potential gain is you'll be looking to come and target these lows down into here. So a potential one to 10 risk to reward based upon that scenario. But for the entire week, we could look to maybe hold that position and target a pretty cool one to 23. So for every dollar that you've risked in here, you might be looking to gain $23 back. So you might have risked $100 here, 
that could be $2,300 back from just allowing the trade to become an investment. What I mean by that is allowing it to play out. Okay. So this is what I'm essentially looking for. Very, very similar situation to what GU is offering over here as well. Okay. We can see that price has now swept this old high. Money. Anyone that was looking to sell this trade last week, stops have now been taken, come to break even, or buying orders have now been introduced in order for the market to maybe hedge higher. However, the overriding trend is looking to go lower. So my advice on something like GU is probably going to be looking around these levels. Let me just narrow that up. So again, probably about a 20 pip position in terms of risk. You're looking to target over 200 pips. So again, another one to 10 type situation, so on and so forth. Moving on. Okay, this is all in correlation to hopefully what we're going to see here with this DXY. We can start to see the euro obviously play out. Aussie, we're looking for Aussie to potentially play out from very, very similar levels. Um, New Zealand dollar, so on and so forth. It's 10 o'clock. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I appreciate that there is a crazy amount of information going on there. Um, <laughs> all right, I, I do understand that. But that I just wanted to open your mind to a potential deeper understanding of what's truly going on within the market and how you can kind of look to utilize that moving forward. All right, a quick one, uh, Aussie. Duh, 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 duh. Aussie was one of my favorite ones for the week, so I will probably be looking to send that one out. Um, now that we're back at these levels, I would expect probably this level, probably expect 69300 to be hit. And then we could look to come and revisit some of these lows down into here. Okay. Come and revisit some of these lows down into here. So again, another solid situation where the risk to reward ratio is so, so important. Everything in life is about risk to reward, right? I'm not going to go too deep in on it. Obviously, you take that information as you want to take that information, but everything you do in life is risk to reward. What is the reward potential? Well, you're looking at a nice one to seven, that's 7% potential. If you're risking 2%, that's 14% potential. You find two or three of them in a week, then you can start to see how you begin to percentage compound your account quite aggressively. Last one, EJ. Looking extremely bearish in regards to we should be expecting further downside. Heavily weighted in terms of the weekly time frame. The daily, I would probably expect price to return to around 120.70 and then probably look for opportunities to take that thing much, much lower again. So another 200, 300 pip potential on something like EJ moving forward. And I think GJ has again the potential to maybe revisit 134 and head lower. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate it was a lot of information. Um, hopefully someone found it valuable. That's all that matters, whether it's maybe a few of you, whether it's one of you, or whether it's uh, some of you that might come and join me on the sessions, or actually just kind of take the opportunity to engage in the skill set. Yes, the marketing is amazing, but what you can do is you can market yourself better if you're looking to capitalize on the trading profits as well. So guys, trade safe. Love you all. Uh, and I look forward to kind of hopefully seeing you over on, uh, over on the study or at least uh, any more conventions when this Corona thing is over. Thank you so much, John, for being on. We love and appreciate you. Thank you for all the nuggets. My goodness. Like I was getting so many messages during the call of people literally saying, Oh my God, he's so good. That's so much value. The value is insane. Guys, Please drop some love hearts in the chat box right now for John because he really threw it down. You guys see what I meant when I say he knows his thing. He's got the experience. He's got the results. Like, this isn't just somebody coming to teach theory. This is what he actually does on a day-to-day -day in his life. This is it funds his whole lifestyle. So drop some love hearts on the chat box. Let's appreciate him because the value was insane. But before we go, guys... We are going to end the call out with a party. So, John, thank you so much for your time. We love and appreciate you. And everybody is literally going to implement everything that you taught us. Now we're going to end the call with a party, guys, because it's only right that we finish up with a party. So we're going to party.
So let me get some um, music going for us. Okay, hold on, guys. Let's go. Hang on, guys. The music is coming. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. If you're looking to start an online business oh selling God, online love. courses or online coaching, then I'd love to invite you to a... Okay, party over. Have a great day, guys. Just rock the rock.